Shout out to my people coming in on YouTube, guys. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the Angel Reese coverage that she's been receiving. We're going to be talking about the Good Times cartoon, uh, the reaction to that. We're going to be talking about Luke, Luther Campbell, former Two Live Crew frontman, promoter, uh, is thinking about actually running for Congress here in Florida as well, too. So we're going to be discussing that. We intend on having a pretty um, full um, slate ahead of us tonight. Definitely hope for some pretty good participation as well, too. Want to hear what you guys think about that. When people come to YouTube, make sure y'all click that notification bell. Make sure you go ahead and like, share, leave a comment for tonight's broadcast as well, too. Shout out to Black Majority State. I see Black Majority State up in the space as well, too, guys. And I hope everybody's been having a good weekend. Shout out to Professor. Professor, what's up? I see you up in the space as well, too. I know y'all want to hear about this this thing going on with Luke potentially talking about running for office. Now, Luke, for those that don't know, um, down in Miami, Luke ran for mayor years ago as well, too. I believe he might have came in fourth or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but I believe he came in like fourth place. <clears throat> and that'll be quite the thing to see Luke actually talking about running for Congress now as well, too. So shout out to you guys. Got to talk about the, the the good time reboot as well. Be nice. What's going on with you? You see you just touched down over there in YouTube and shout out to the other guys and ladies that's touching down in the YouTube realm as well, too. Um, Got to talk about this this thing with the damn good time uh, reboot as well, too, man. This is everybody saw the actual trailer. <laughs> Oh boy, it's like Bay Bay Kids meeting um, and what's a good one? Bay Bay Kids meets um, the Boondocks that meets some um, the PJs. I don't know what the hell that was, uh, but um, we we, we got to go ahead. We got to discuss that the reaction that people online. He had a couple of the old cast members as well too that say, hey, you know what? This ain't it. No, this ain't it right here. Got to talk about. We, like I said, we got to talk about um, Angel Reese and everything that's going on with her as well, too. So, you know, it, it, we, 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 we intend on getting it in as well, too. So we got a hand up early. So, Somali, go ahead and unmute your mic. How you doing? Hey, everyone. Uh, Ray's face. Uh, I just wanted to just ask, um, as far as the Good Times cartoon, is there any way for it to be pressured, uh, folks can pressure that's like to cancel the show. Like, how, how, how that can that be done? There's a petition um, already that's forming on social media. You got a petition forming right now on social media. I don't know if, I don't know if they're going to be able to get them to, but, you know, people are applying pressure. They don't like the, the representation. They don't like how negative it is. And, you know, you can show, you can show poor black people with more dignity in that. And I, I know they're going to say, well, you know, it's a, it's a it's an animation. It's a cartoon, so it's it's meant to be a satire and to be funny and this and that or whatever. But um, yeah, we we have a lot of people right now that's not happy campers about that. Matter of fact, Somali, go ahead and I want to touch up on that. Um, I'm gonna touch up on that actual article as well too. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and let you get it in. Shout out to see my girl Rira down there too. So shout out Rira. Yeah, no, I I just wanted to ask. Is there like a because if folks just continue to like dislike, because I because I know on the Netflix option you can dislike or like the show. If enough people dislike the, 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 the show and continue to write letters, would that pressure Netflix to just cancel the show because they don't want to deal with the headache? So I'm 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 just asking what avenues can be taken to cancel the, the show? Because I signed the petition. I just wanted to know if you do you have to dislike on that on the net Netflix account to get their attention. That much, I, I guess, if they had an overwhelming amount of dislikes, of course, the show hasn't come out yet. So you got people trying to nip it in the bud right now. You got people saying, "Hey, we don't want to, we don't want to see this garbage. We want to go ahead and nip it in the bud right now." So that's um interesting. Like you say, you do have a thumbs up, thumbs down. You can dislike it. And I guess that would be once, you know, they actually got through with the production and they start showing it, then they would have an impact. But you got people right now saying, hey, we don't want it to get that far. We don't want it to get out of production. We don't want it to come to screen. We want to go ahead and we want to get rid of this thing right here, right now. Do you know, do you know what's so interesting, Brother Hughes Counter, is that um, this is 
like almost six, seven years ago, but there's a Somali rapper, right? His name is Kana, right? He had like a hit that, um, it, it was called Wave, Waving Flags, right? And he was given his own show uh, by HBO, and it was supposed to be a, a drama about Somali American life in Minnesota. And uh, it never really got, got off the ground. They actually filmed uh, many episodes, and they had a season ready to go. But because folks in the community in Minneapolis were protesting because they didn't, because the they, they show me uh, portray us in the negative light, and it was big, massive protest in Minneapolis. So due to the pressure, that, that show was canceled, and it actually never came on air. So I just wanted to know that if uh, something similar can be done, because it has been done where they've shot shows, and it, it never came, came on uh, air because of uh, so much uh, political and, you know, backlash and pressure from the communities. You make an interesting point there, Somali. Professor, keep your hand up. I want to touch up on the article real quick, and then, Professor, I want you to go ahead and speak so you can get an a, a insight of just right now the reaction that's going around as well, too, on social media and in the real, real world as well, too. Uh, from the Pittsburgh Carrier, it's up in the, in the uh, Jumbotron. It says, animated remake of Good Times upsets Black people over negative images. The streaming service Netflix is facing a backlash of mostly black viewers after they release a trailer for a cartoon reboot of the 1970 black sitcom Good Times. Many viewers are angered over the stereotypes and the characters that are not reflective of black life. There have been calls for the National Association of Advancement of Colored People or the NAACP and other organizations to boycott the project. In addition, an online petition for signatures is active. So like I say, right now, like you said, you sign that 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 signature on it. If you guys get a chance, y'all can put that up in the Jumbotron as well, too. When the Tribune contacted the NAACP, a representative said the organ organization has yet to put out a statement on the project. Scheduled to stream on April 12th, the Good Times cartoon may remind viewers of the previous black animations such as Bay Bay Kids, the PJs, Similar to these productions, Good Time has an all-star cast of voices featuring Wanda Sykes, J.B. Smoove, Jay Farrell, and Marcia, uh, Martin. Laughing at the characters of Black people is one of the oldest and most poisonous forms of entertainment in American history, said Walter Gleason, professor of history at McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's no coincidence that this form of Minstrel has reemerged in animation when white nationalists have gained new platforms since 2015. I was offended, surprised, and extremely disappointed, said Patty Jackson, longtime radio personality at WDAS FM in Philadelphia, especially knowing such great actors as JV, Yvette, and Jay. Jackson said she was initially excited about the project, but then was taken aback. It was a poor presentation and it's something that should have been done a whole lot better, said Jackson, who also hosts online entertainment segment titled What's the 411? The 1970 sitcom Good Times was created as a spinoff from another sitcom called Maud. Of course, that was B. Arthur who played in the Golden Girls later on. And that show Maud's Maid was a character of uh, uh, Maud's Maid was a character of Florida Evans played by Actress Esther Rowe later became the king of the spinoffs as other shows like The Jefferson Star and Philadelphia native Sherman Hensley originated from the controversial hit All in the Family. Another show, Sanford and Son, starring Red Fox, which debuted in 1972, was Lear's first show that featured an all-black cast. In the mid-1970s, there were few black sitcoms on television, and Lear set out to change that. However, Lear's good intentions were also received with heavy criticism from the black community. For one, the show's concept was developed by black producers Eric Monte and Michael Evans, who allegedly were not compensated by Lear, resulting in a lawsuit. Evans also played Henley's son Lionel on the Jeffersons. For y'all that remember, uh, Michael Evans, he was the first. He was the first Lionel. He was the first Lionel. Good Times, along with the Sanford, both portrayed either poor, or struggling black families, particularly the Evans family of five who lived in the Chicago projects, trying to overcome the daily dilemmas of poverty and unemployment. In response, the Jeffersons featuring an upper middle class black family in New York City was created. The new variation of Good Times, however, appears to rehash the undertones of its predecessor on a deeper level. 
The downside of modern reboots is that Hollywood seems to be more interested in catering to viewers' nostalgia rather than adding substance to the television legacy of culture classics like Good Times, said pop culture journalist Najar Perkins. The original show's actor, John Amos, who played James Evans in role, paid their dues for years in order to get leading roles in the industry. Even when they got the job, the storylines are problematic given the absence of black writers. By investing interest in those old stories that tells us that they're not concerned with uplifting new authentic tales that reflect our that reflect our experiences today perkins said taking a 70s uh sitcom and repeating its dated humor 50 years later with stereotypical characters and cheap satire tells us that the entertainment industry doesn't truly care to speak to the current issues nor move the needle for black storytelling in a compelling way perkins later explained that during a time when black television shows already have a short a short shelf life and black creators and writers struggle to get their foot in the door they can't afford to endanger their limited opportunities with new age sequel that can't read the room there's all there's a way to tell humanizing stories about modern black families living in poverty but it's dangerous to think that we can't do independently of a reboot that wants to restore the old feeling decades later she said we have to ask ourselves at what cost are we willing to compromise the integrity of our stories for the sake of entertainment it makes you wonder who this reboot is really for. Let me go ahead and kick it to my man, Professor. Professor, what's going on with you tonight? What's up, that brother, News Total? What's up to everybody in the space? Peace, power, and reparations to all of us. Now, let me say this. Uh, News Total, uh, DJ, Brother Black, Majority down there, re -Raw. I'm going to say this. When we were growing up, and we was watching this good times we saw poverty but what we also saw was a black family that had unity and they had morality in the storylines okay that was always a storyline that showed the moral compass of that family if this cartoon or this animated so-called reboot is not going to do that, then yes, it needs to be canceled immediately. It does not need to be shown because what we got, got to be about family is positivity of our community. Now, we know the negativity that goes on within our community, but the negativity goes on within all communities. But it seems like our negativities get highlighted for some reason, and we all know why. But let's be honest, these negativities are all over. This is not just a black thing when it comes to negative stuff that goes on within the black community or any community. It's everybody. So when you look at good times, I remember all of the stuff that held that family together, despite the poverty, despite um, the many obstacles. So if they're not showing something positive with this animated version, then yes, we need to we need to do all we can to make sure that this is canceled and don't never uh, see the day of light. Now, I know you, news told you're going to touch up on the Angel Reese story, but I, I just got to say something about that uh, if it's okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. I want to say with Angel Reese, y'all, this sister uh, is probably, I would say, one of the best players in women's college basketball I have ever seen. And there's been men. She's definitely one of the top ones up there. And it seems like ever since the Final Four of last year when they played our and her and Caitlin Clark um, were having this one-on-one -on -one battle with each other out there, it's been this storyline that's been put out there by, let's just be honest, the white male media, because that's who controls it, that wants to make Caitlin Clark the hero of women's basketball. She has elevated women's basketball. And there's been so many great women who have played the game of college basketball, but for some reason you want to elevate Caitlin Clark as being the savior of women's basketball. BS. B 
BS. Because there's been many great sisters that have owned the basketball court and have made that game what it is. And for you, white media, to continue to highlight Caitlin Clark, even after South Carolina just put the beat down on them, it's a disgrace. We should be talking about South Carolina as the national champions. But every time you look around, the storyline is about Caitlin Clark. Even in a loss, they still are putting this woman up there at the top of the storyline. It's a disgrace. South Carolina should be the storyline. They just went out there and took it to Clayton, Caitlin Clark and her team. And, let, and let's just tell it like it is, the Iowa Hawkeyes will not be relevant next year. <laughs> Caitlin Clark is now gone. You won't even hear about it. But South Carolina and Dawn Staley, you will continue to hear about that sister and that team. Dawn Staley has done a lot for women's college basketball. That's, that's the storyline right there. That's what we need to be talking about. And Angel Reese, they did a lot while she was in the, in, in the game. She went out there when her and Caitlin Clark faced each other last year. Uh, 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 Angel Reese went on to win the national championship. Caitlin Clark couldn't even get a national championship. So why is Caitlin Clark being put at the top, top of the storyline? Why is she at the top? Why do we keep rushing this lady? Like she's the best thing ever. Now she she went out there. She's done some great things. She scored a lot of points. But is she the one that made women's college basketball what it is? Is she the one that saved it? Is she that person? I'm gonna land my plane right there, y'all. But I want y'all to think about how they've been playing the storyline out with Caitlin Clark. Like she's the hero or the heroine of, of, of women's college basketball. I'm gonna land right there. All right, Professor. I'm going to get... News tether, uh, check your messages. I think... Uh, on, uh, okay, I just checked it. I'm gonna, When I get a chance, I'm going to take a look at it. Touching up on what you just said, Professor, about the C C Caitlin Clark thing, let me read something, just a short article from our, one of our curation partners, Black Sports Online. It says, and this is right after the, 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 the Final Four game, they lost to Iowa, and she was at the um, podium. Of course, she was emotional when she was talking. Uh, it says, um, in a jaw-dropping turn of events, Angel Reese found herself in the hot seat during a post-game press conference after LSU's shattering loss to Iowa. The press conference took an unexpected turn as Reese had a heartbreaking um, wait a heartbreaking message noting, that, noting all the cruel and disturbing attacks she had to endure as emotions ran high following LSU's elimination from the game. This surprising moment added a touch of humor and confusion to the already tense atmosphere. The loss had a significant impact on the team's morale. The players were visibly disheartened by a defeat, feeling the weight of the elimination from the tournament. Despite the loss, Angel Reese and her teammates received some support. But a lot of people believe that Reese brought this on herself and is now playing victim. An emotional Reese had a heartbreaking message in her post-game conference to reporters noting all the cruel and dis disturbing attacks she's had to deal with. I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want to see them down. And it sucks, but I wouldn't change anything. I'm unapologetically me. I'm always going to leave that mark and be who I am. Uh, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark have been two of the most dominant, widely talked about athletes over the past year. But of course, there was only room for one or two to move on into the final four. Caitlin Clark already announced back in February that she was declaring for the upcoming 2024 draft. The Indiana Fever hold a number one pick and expect to take her while uh, Reese is projected to be going seventh overall to the Minnesota Lynx. Um, I'm going I'm to get back to. I'm going to get back to what you were saying, Professor. I don't take anything away from Caitlin Clark. You know, Caitlin Clark, she's the all-time leading scorer in, you know, in, in women's basketball. They keep bringing up the fact that um, she, she broke 
Pistol Pete's record, but uh, Pistol Pete, I believe, only played three years as well. So I believe she it took her four years to break his record. But um, I take nothing away from Angel Reese. You have to be for real. Angel Reese, because of her success, and, and you have to also be too, when, you, when you're in a sport where especially something is dominated by uh, black people, and if you have a white star come along, superstar, that's going to bring interest to it. That's going to bring interest. So, yeah, a, a big a, a big thing, a big reason why college basketball is as popular as it is, too, is because Angel Reese, because in basketball, if you remember what they used to talk about, the NBA in the 70s, the NBA in the 70s, everybody talked about the, the drug problems the players had and this and that, whatever. The problem with the NBA in the 70s is that the NBA was too black. OK, when you have a major, that's why the NBA for the longest trail behind football and basketball. Of course, we know football is the most popular sport in the country anyways, but the NBA was a third, maybe fourth. I mean, they, they, they were distant. But with the emergence of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson coming along at the same time, that brought a renewed interest into the sport because you had the flashy black player with the God-given ability against this workaholic white player from the country who had this lunchbox mentality and this 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 undying worth ethic so that actually saved the nba you know that actually saved the nba because of what because you had this black versus white type battle going on and bird people people forget larry bird won three back to back to back mvps in the nba magic johnson didn't win one to maybe his was seventh eighth year in the league so you had for the longest, you had a lot of people, a lot, especially a lot of the, the sports writers and stuff. Because you got to remember, even though Magic won a championship his first year, Bird was a rookie of the year. People were saying that you know Magic was a beneficiary of playing with Kareem, and and Bird was the one that really brought the, the, the Celtics back and this and that or whatever. So whenever you have that dynamic of a, a great white athlete, and she's a great athlete in college, I don't know what she's going to do in the, the WNBA. They get elevated to a status, almost like a god. I have been watching, I have been watching sports for at least thirty-five years. You know, I mean, really to the point watching and understanding. I've been watching it longer than that since I was, you know, uh, three, four years of age. But to the point where I can really comprehend and understand. I've been watching the CBS Evening News. Grew up always watching the 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 the, the, the six thirty news. For the past two months, I have never seen an athlete on the CBS Evening News. As much as Caitlin Clark, I have never in my life seen. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm talking about. It, it was almost to the point, like at least a couple times a month they're gonna put it in. And I, mind you, I've seen Magic Johnson play. I've seen Michael Jordan play. Uh, Kobe, LeBron, Kareem. I mean, I, I, I've seen Sugar Ray Leonard fight. I've seen uh, Floyd Mayweather fight. I've seen some of the greatest. People, football, Deion Sanders, Bo Jackson, hell, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. I, I've seen some of the greatest college athletes, football, basketball, ever compete. I was telling my dad, I said, you know what? I have never seen this kind of coverage for a college athlete. I have never seen a, I've never seen an athlete get as much notoriety on the world, on a, on the national news, as much as this this girl's been getting. Like, I, I, okay, I get it. She's a great player, but damn. I've seen players that were Tiger Woods at his height. He wasn't on the CBS Evening News two, three times a month. So the impact that she's had with on basketball, it, 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 it goes beyond just basketball. You know, it's something that she's in the field and she's doing something that they say, hey, you know what? Black people are supposed to be the best, but now she's the best in the world or whatever. So it goes way deeper than than just that. I give her credit. She's a great player. People forget that for the longest time. And, and Cheryl Miller, Reggie Miller's sister, you know, and Cheryl Miller, unfortunately, ended up, I believe, getting hurt. And there was no WNBA. But Cheryl Miller was a female version of Reggie Miller, her brother. <laughs> Cheryl Miller is considered and was considered the greatest female basketball player of all time. So, you know, I, I take nothing away from Caitlin Clark. I take nothing away from her athleticism, her shooting, her skill. But, you know, Cheryl Miller used to kick Reggie Miller's behind growing up. <laughs> and Reggie Miller, she's better than yeah, well, she ain't better than Reggie, but, you know, growing up she was. But, you know, once he. But that's what I'm saying, because look, when, when, uh, when they used to do interviews together, when they was both commentators, 
Sugar used to clown Reggie on the stage like, yeah, I used to dog him when we was younger. Reggie sit there and not say nothing. Not say nothing, yo. Like he was his punk or something. <laughs> Yeah, because she was better than him. And I mean, so the, the, the sit up here, like I say, I, I I take nothing away from what Caitlin Clark was doing. I take nothing away from her and this and that or whatever. But when you have that, when you have that black and white dynamic and they talk all oh, how, you know, it's to the point that they talking about the, the actual game, the, the, the championship game that was played Monday night. They say that that game is the highest rating game since 2019, men or women college basketball and they said even the, even the pro even the nba now let's not forget that you got Deion sanders that that just offered caitlin clark what five million dollars to come play in the big three ice cube ice cube, ice cube. Ice cube my bad my bad ice cube what i'm thinking I, ice cube ice cube just offered her five million dollars to play in, in the big three so i you know i i see this right here. a lot of people that they, they're glad you know that that Angel Reese lost. They didn't like Angel Reese. They felt like Angel Reese came into the year with a big head. Um, you know, if you are, if you know, when, when, when you talk to talk, people say you got to walk the walk and this and that. I even saw Boyce Watkins um, say a comment about her as well, too. I can't remember exactly what it was. Like, yeah, if you're going to be bold and this and that, then you got to take whatever comes with it. But when you start having the LA Times them, and I and I didn't read that whole article, but the LA Times, them, and, they, and they not only were they, you know, talking about her, but they're talking about they were talking about the LSU players as well, too. They're basically the Iowa girls or these all American girls, these debutantes. And I forgot what they call the um what they call the LSU girls. It was just the way the Lakers and the Celtics were back in the 80s. Yeah, it, it's just like how the Lakers and the Celtics was back in the 80s. The Lakers was a, was a flashy team and this and that. And and the Celtics was a, was was the blue collar next door guys or whatever. So you've always had these type of racial type, even and when you're looking at sports, it's always coded language as well too. So Angel, you know, she has caught a lot of flack. Now none, I'm gonna read to y'all what none swirl zones he's saying over here on YouTube about Angel. He says in Angel Reese case, someone has convinced her the most outrageous behavior, the better and more influence. He also says, I wonder if Angel Reese alleged 1.9 college GPA had anything to do with her entering the WNBA. I'll be, I'm going to be honest with you, none of swirls on. I don't know what her, her, her GPA is, but if she had a 1.9, she wouldn't have been playing. She wouldn't have been playing no college sports this year. You know, if she would have had a 1.9, and I know you say alleged, if she had a 1.9, she she probably would have been um, suspended for the semester. She would have been ruled academically ineligible. She wouldn't have been able to play. You have to maintain a certain GPA to play sports. If your GPA goes under, uh, if your GPA falls under a, a, a certain number, which would probably be 2.0, uh, I don't know if they moved it up to 2.5, but. 2.5. Yeah, so if it falls underneath that, and it used to be 2.0, so it, I guess it depends on, but it used to be 2.0, but if it falls underneath that, then I, I certainly don't think you would, um, I certainly don't think that, um, you know, she would have um, that she would um, that you would have her playing basketball as well, too. So that that that's just, you know, I, I don't know about that. The one point nine. she's going to the WNBA because really there's nothing left for nothing left for her to do in college. Why come back an additional year and get hurt? You know, she won a championship. Uh, she played. Um, she got deep in the, in, the, in the NCAA tournament this year. So there's nothing for Angel Reese to come back for other. You know, she can always come back and get her degree during the summertime. But, you know, there's nothing left for her to prove in college, you know, except risking injury. So just like Caitlin Clark could have came back another year, she decided to go. So, you know, that that's pretty much what it is. I'm going to get to Carlos and then I'm going to um, get back to you. Oh, Professor, you were supposed to go. I'm, did you did you? Did I say you were supposed to go? Let me get to you, Professor, and I get to you, Carlos. Yeah, I was just going to uh, say news total. You're right, man. It's, it's, it's that whole black and white dynamic, and um, and that's what it comes down to. Uh, it's a, it's a storyline that the media is going to play on uh, when you have a white player like Caitlin Clark. There has been other uh, good players. Sharon Miller, like you said, is the one of the best, probably the best ever uh, I ever seen. Uh, she taught Reggie Miller how to play basketball. That's how he got the skills that he got was from Sharon Miller, his sister. Now, with that being said, 
There was another great white basketball player that played on Connecticut. A lot of people forgot about her, Rebecca Lobo. How, how many of y'all remember her? She had to, and to me, Rebecca Lobo was better, way better than Caitlin Clark. I remember Rebecca Lobo, but I will say this, Professor. Like she was a well, she was an inside play. Another girl, uh, Caitlin, is a guard, so it's a little different. But I think you know Caitlin with her range and stuff. I would I, I would say Caitlin Clark is better, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, Caitlin Clark, you know, because of her, uh, her being an outside shooter, that you know she comes off as being like a pure shooter. You know, she scored all these points. Uh, it's one thing to go out here and score all these points, y'all, but that don't necessarily make you the greatest basketball player. That just makes you a great score. See, that's the difference. I want everybody to understand that. That makes you a great score, not necessarily the best basketball player. It's just like we all have said right here, Cheryl Miller would actually be your greatest basketball, female basketball player. Uh, just just put it out there. I mean, I'm not going to uh, say it any better than that. Cheryl Miller all day for me. Uh, Caitlin Clark, this is somebody that's being played up by a white male supremacy media that want to have a hero for women's basketball, and that is Caitlin Clark. That's why when you start, when you talking about that coverage, that's what that coverage is all about, man. This is white supremacy. Um, and Angel Reese was the villain. She was put out there as a villain because she was doing that, you can't see me, to Caitlin Clark, and white people didn't like it. But you know why she did it? Because Caitlin Clark was the one that was out there doing it. And nobody said anything about Caitlin Clark when she was throwing her hands out there. Talking about, oh, you can't see me. But guess what? Angel Reed saw you and went on to win the national championship. That's right. She went on to win the national championship, which is something Caitlin Clark didn't do. So I want everybody to understand, you can be a great scorer, not necessarily the best basketball player ever and that is coming out from the white male media that wants her to be the greatest basketball player in women's college basketball that's a lie she's a great scorer so i want y'all to separate the two out and uh i'm gonna land right there and who's talking about i just want to put that out there man yeah caitlin clark did some things out there she put up some points she's a great shooter but i wouldn't put her up there as the best basketball player in women's in women's college basketball Real talk. I see a couple people said Diana. What's her name? Tarasi. They say she won three back to back NCAA titles. Um, yeah, she and then I see Nightfall said, don't forget, Lisa Leslie was one of the first females to dunk in the game. I believe Cheryl Miller was the first female to dunk in the game, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. Um, say uh, no swirls on. Say wasn't Angel making more money in college NIL? Probably, probably. But they they expect I believe the average salary for WNBA players I heard somebody say was seventy five to eighty thousand or something like that. Well, it's definitely going to go up. So that, that you know, it's, it's definitely with Caitlin Clark. Uh, I'm sure she's going to be the first one to get a a six figure deal in the WNBA as well too, because she's going to have all kind of suitors, Nike and Reebok, and everybody's going to offer her um you know all of these apparel um contracts and everything else like that, shoe contracts and all this other stuff. So. She's about to be a very, very rich woman as well, too. Um, let me go ahead and get to Carlos, and then I'm going to get back to you, Somali. Peace. What's up, news? DJ, professor. Long time. What's up? Hey, What's up, Carlos? Uh, Long time, bro. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to touch on Y'all kind of took all my points that I was talk, I was going to say about Cheryl Miller. She could, but... It's a documentary about that team Cheryl Miller saw in the USC called the Lady Trojans. The, or it's, something, it's something like that. It was on HBO. And people forget how good that team was. Caitlin Clark couldn't beat any one of them now. <laughs> and they're all six. And she couldn't beat any one of them now. What about Cynthia Cooper? What about her? She was she was considered the Michael Jordan of the WNBA, you know, at at the beginning stages of the of the league. So this coverage of her is just she's not even the best white player. Diana Taurasi was the best white player, female player that I've seen, and I'm a Celtics fan, 
and Larry Bird, that Larry Bird. Mm-hmm. Larry. Hey, 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 watch, watch, watch. We number one. We number one. But I'm a Celtics fan. Been a Celtics fan all my life. And Larry Bird was a hell of a player. I couldn't take anything. Him and Magic. But Magic was always my favorite player. I mean, the thing Magic did with the basketball, the only person other than him I ever seen do it was Pistol Pete. You know, I mean, it was just remarkable. But the injury situation. I was about to say, don't forget Earl Manico. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one. Per Washington, another one. But I could go on and on. But um, the, the, the injury situation. Let's get to the nuts and bolts of it. Who made her the villain? The white male media is the ones who made her the, the villain. And now they want to absolve themselves of any wrongdoing and say, oh, now she's trying to play the victim. No, you made her that. You made her the villain. You know, the, it, Malcolm said it. The media will have you hate loving your oppressor and hating the people that's trying to help you. You know, that's how they, that's how they work. And as far as this good times, people, uh, I don't even want to call it a reboot, and I don't want to disrespect the stage and curse up here, but I put it in the uh, in the purple field. We need to start looking at the people behind Steph, Steph, Steph Curry is a executive producer. Seth MacFarlane is an executive producer. We need to start getting for disrespecting black people and a show that is considered a legendary black show. And I'll pass the mic. Real talk. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, brother. Let me go ahead and get to um Somali, and then we're going to touch up on the loop thing, too, as well, too. So go ahead, Somali. Yeah, so I just wanted you to say um, there's been times in uh, news media where they prop up uh, not only white, but also these uh, minority uh, players as well. Like, remember with, Jer- with Jeremy Lin? He got so much uh, uh, coverage because he was an Asian American uh, player who was doing well for like two or three months. And also, you're seeing it in the NBA as well with a lot of these Euro players and non black American players like. Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, Pascal Siakam, uh, the other guy's name, Shea uh, Alexander, from, from Joker, Joker. yeah, Joker, Joker. So there, whenever uh, you know foreign people that are not Black American uh, do exceptionally well, the media props them up. So you definitely, and and in the NBA, you definitely see a push of. Um, it's making non-black American players in the face of the NBA. But I don't think it's going to happen with basketball because black Americans are just so overly saturated in, in that sport. So I don't think it's going to happen, but they are definitely trying. And I well, I, I don't know, Somali. You got a lot now because in the NBA in the 90s started doing a lot of this, the, the bringing in the European players and stuff like that. So we're looking at the league now that so probably your top – out of, out of your top five players, three of them you got Giannis, who's who's Nigerian, but he's from Greece. Then you got a uh, Djokovic, and you got a uh, the Luka Donovich from from Dallas as well too. So you got Joel and B. So yeah, you got quite a few um, foreign players now. That's really you know in, in bas in the NBA take. I'm not gonna say taking over, but they up there. Yeah, but that but, but but you do have the brother um, Anthony Edwards. He plays with the Timberwolves. He's FBA. He's he's uh, being positioned to be one of the faces of, of the league. And you know what's so interesting is that you have a player like Jason Tatum. He's Black American from St. Louis. He plays for the Celtics. His team is the best team in the NBA, and he's not even being considered for MVP. When they're doing the MVP uh, voting, he's they position him to be fourth or fifth. But the Joker's being positioned to be the MVP. For why? 
he's putting up similar numbers that put, put, put up when he won his first two. It's, it's great, but it's not spectacular. They don't want any chance. That's why Denver. Ex- exactly, and exactly. And, and and this is what I'm, I'm talking about. I just think that it's going to come a point where black American players, are not only in the NBA, but these other leagues, they're, they're going to have to face their own leagues. But I don't think both want to have that conversation just yet. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let me give a shout out real quick to Brother Moku and EHZ for their contribution on Cash App. And guys, we do have we do have the membership up there in the Jumbotron. We're trying to get people to go ahead and sign up, become a contributor. You can support News Total monthly by by uh, creating a profile membership on the actual website. It's up in the Jumbotron on the far right hand side for as little as $1.75 a month. You can support the newstotal.com platform. We don't have any signups so far for the month of April. We're nine days into the month. We don't have not one sign up. So hopefully tonight we can get somebody either here on X or on YouTube to go ahead and sign up. If you're on X, it's right on the screen. It's newstotal.com slash customer. Click that link and you can go directly. It's also in the description as well, too. We don't have any signups for the month of April to, to go ahead and um become members of the actual platform. So let's see tonight if we can get one or two people to at least go ahead and sign up. Please, we need to go ahead and support for those that's able to. We made it as affordable and cheap as possible, $1.75 a month. You can support the newsoda.com platform for as little as a dollar and 75 cents a month. I'll say that again, for as little as a dollar 75 cents a month. Uh, let me go ahead and get to... Um, I guess DJ, you had your hand up, right? You know, DJ. Well, while you doing that, I will go ahead. Also, you can support on Cash App, Dollar Sign News Total, Dollar Sign News Total. Venmo, PayPal is up in the jumbotron. Same for those on YouTube, the Cash App, Dollar Sign News Total, Venmo, PayPal in the description. Let me touch up on this thing about Luke, Luther Campbell talking about running for. For uh, potentially running for Congress, go ahead real quick. This is from uh, Burt Bright, uh, Luther Campbell, rapper known for me so horny running for Congress to fight MFers, Trump, Gates, former two live crew rapper. Luther Campbell is planning to run for Congress as a Democrat to represent his home state of Florida. His political goal to fight these MFers, including Representative Matt Gates. Former President Donald Trump and all these crazy ass Republicans. Campbell 63 is preparing to launch his candidacy for Florida's 20th congressional district, a majority black area in the southeastern part of the state that is currently represented by Representative Sheila McCormick. I'm going to make an announcement in a couple of weeks. He told the New York Post, I think I have a great chance of winning during Luther Campbell's time with the two live crew. The group put out the infamous 1989 album As Nasty As They Want to Be, which was slapped with obscenity charges for tracks such as Me So Horny and The F Shop. Campbell separately told establishment news outlet The Bulwark about his political goals. And I get to fight these MFers, Campbell reportedly said. Gates and Trump and all these crazy Republicans want to divide us. I'm going to be as nasty as I want to be, Campbell added with a laugh. As part of his congressional run, Campbell is planning a documentary that will follow him along the campaign trail. So what do y'all think about that? There, I wonder now, you know, Luke be holding these spaces and stuff like that as well, too. So um, I'm sure Luke will get some support here in the state of Florida. Like I said, when I first started the um, broadcast, I said that, you know, Luke had ran for mayor of Miami years ago, and I think he came in fourth place. So this would be interesting to see as well to Luther Campbell. He holds these spaces. I know a lot of people in these spaces um, are not particularly fond of Luke. And of course, I know a lot of you guys are talking about the documentary that came out not too long ago, the actual Freak Nick documentary as well, too. And I believe Luke, Luke was in that. I have still not had a chance to see that documentary. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and see it. I don't have Hula, so I may have to go ahead and just, I do want to take a look at it. But Professor, what's, what, what's your opinion about Luke? Captain D, Uncle Luke, running for running for Congress. Man, let me tell you, news told him this is a joke. Uh, this man, he all he'll ever be famous for is banned in the USA, and that's what he'll be known for. 
they'd be famous for that court case. You know, that was, and that was a significant court case. If you really want to think about it from a First Amendment standpoint in the music industry, that was a very important case. He'll forever be known for that purpose. But other than that, man, he needs to sit down and just leave politics alone. Uh, I, I've been in some of his spaces, man. He runs these off-the-wall spaces with uh, whatever. And I forgot his buddy's name. They be in there with Nikki something. N- Nikki Barnes. Nikki Barnes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's yeah, she, uh, skis or Nikki Barnes. That's her name. That's, that's, what, that's what she is. And, um, and I'm going to tell you something. The space that he runs is nothing like the greatest space over here, which is news total space where you're going to get information and you're going to get consistent. Everybody gets to talk. None of this, you know, uh, what you call it, like Jerry Springer off the wall type crap that you see over there. Uh, oh, yeah. Father Professor, you the father. <laughs> over here, over here, man, the news total space, you're going to get what you call classy and information, and at the same time, we talk about everything, we still have fun in here. That's what you want, man. And um, so Luke, what Luke needs to do is stay banned from the USA. And please do not run. Real talk, Professor, real talk. Uh, I've never been in Luke's spaces. I know that he had, because I know I've had, you know, I've had other people, that, a lot of you guys I know went to his spaces and stuff like that. But I know, um, like you say, Nikki Barnes, I, and I believe she's connected to the Democrat Party here in Florida as well, too. And then you had Stephen Johnson that had been in there. Uh, I, I tried to do Stephen for a little while, but Stephen just kept trolling. So I just had to block him. I just I couldn't take it no more. But, you know, he has his um he has his people that be up in there and stuff. But I, I don't realistically believe Luke. I'd be surprised, you know, crazy things have happened because I know I was telling somebody that um, I was telling somebody that he's like, well, nobody thought Donald Trump would be president and nobody thought uh, Jesse Biden adventure that used to be a wrestler on WWF would ever become the uh, governor of Minnesota. And nobody ever thought that Arnold Schwarzenegger would become the governor of um, of California. And well, Jerry, Sp- uh, Jerry, Sign- well, Jerry um, Stinger did uh, he used to be uh what the the, the the I think he used to be the mayor of a city or something like that. So people was like, you never know what what may happen or whatever. I'll say this, Jerry Sting, yeah, Springer, Jerry Springer. My bad, but I like I say, nothing really surprises me nowadays in politics. But I would be if Luke, and you know, of course, he's running. They talk about a majority black district, you know, in, in Florida. So that's one thing. So you know. He's kind of looking at that, saying, "Hey, you know, I have a, a decent chance of winning or whatever." But <laughs> good luck with that. None swirls on says, "Let me read this real quick." Ho- hold on, real quick, Somali. I got to read a comment over here on YouTube. None swirls on says, "Good for Luke. Couldn't do any worse." I Florida governor, and his making it a crime for the homeless to sleep on the streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're making it a crime if you're homeless here in Florida, sleeping on the streets can get you locked up as well, too. Um, I wouldn't say no, no swirls on that. He couldn't do any worse. But, you know, like I said, I know I know you have a lot of, and of course, some of the older people have kind of kind of passed away. You know, when back in the day in 89, I was in elementary school when Luke was talking about that, when he was talking about that me so horny and whatnot. And we used to sneak and watch that video, or whatever, like, some of my older cousins and stuff, but there were a lot of people, especially older black people in Florida that hated Luke, detested him. They they just thought he was pure trash and just, they could not stand his music. They couldn't stand what he stood for. They thought it was just the worst thing. I mean, I knew a lot. I'm talking about people in their t- at, at that time that were in their 30s. I'm not talking about people that was 65 and 70. I'm talking about people, you know, um, in the thirties and early forties and stuff like that. When they, when they heard those songs and they heard that music, they just straight up told you it was, it was just straight filth. You know, they straight up saying this, this isn't even this. Nobody should be listening to this stuff as well. You know, I know a number of those people that were around back then that, that, um, that detested Luke for, for, for his actual music and everything else like that. They're no longer around right now. So, you know, 
it, it'll be interesting. A lot of people that were kids at the time, they're my age now with, with you know, families and everything else. It'd be interesting to see how the people down there in that district vote, you know, how would they vote for Luke as well, too? So that, that that's 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 something definitely worth keeping an eye on. I would be shocked. <laughs> like I say, I don't I don't particularly think Luke can win. But, you know, hey, there's no harm in, and there's no harm in trying. So, you know, he Luke may feel like, hey, you know, what's the worst thing? I already lost one um one election. So what if I lose another one, it, it, you know, it's no sweat off my back. So. Um, it's pretty much what we had. I see my girl troubled and came up here. Trouble, what's going on with you tonight? Hey, Toad, I'm out in traffic. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. How y'all doing, everybody in the cut? Long time, no see, no hear, no touch, no what's up. Hey, Trouble, because like, were you were you in the space when we had Judge Joe Brown last week? Uh, yeah, no. Nah. Okay, you say you say yeah. I Second, but you know, yeah, oh, coming. <laughs> uh, okay, because I told I told DJ, I said, DJ, I said, I don't think trouble was in that space. Uh, he was like, When trouble was there, I said, I don't remember seeing her. What, yeah, I came in temporarily, but you know, I, yeah, I'm gonna leave that one alone, but yeah, I was in there temporarily, okay, for a little bit. Well, what's going on with you tonight, Miss Trouble? Not a whole lot trying to get over this cold, but um. Uh, quick, quick, I, I, I haven't been in the space too long, so I, I hope I don't repeat anything. But as far as the Angel Reese coverage, um, I had posted about that yesterday, and I, I think I'm just going to say the same thing I posted. And I, I think ain't, uh, the Caitlin Clark girl is, uh, is, is what America needs right now. It's a great white hope. Um, they haven't had one in a long time. They've been disappointed in their white women for 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 a hot minute now, and, and she's giving them that hope again. And so, um, as you pointed out earlier, there's that black and white um, dynamic right there between her and Angel Reese. And so, of course, they're elevating her up to make her, you know, the the, the best thing since sliced cheese, just because. Um, I don't want to take anything away from her hooping skills. She got she got skills, but I think it's a little bit exaggerated at the same time. And there, when you have uh, someone uh, who white folks wants to make the hero, like a Caitlin Clark, there has to be um, a villain. And they gave that position to Angel Reese. Now, a lot of people have said on their posts, "Well, she she called herself that." Well, she didn't call herself that until you all made her that. And she recognized the dynamic. Well, you all needed a villain. You're making me out to be a villain. So I'll be that. But just because you 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 say that and you say, well, I'll be that, it doesn't mean that you necessarily take that into your spirit as to say, yeah, I am the villain. It's okay. Well, if you say so, then it's whatever. You know, so um, there's there's that. It's, we've, we've had this dynamic for so long, and, I, and it's clear, it's really kind of clear, plain as day to see. It's nothing new. It just probably hasn't popped up in a minute. I think it was just kind of amazing how um, women's basketball haven't really been the highlight of, of anyone's conversation for a long time, even though if you paid attention to the Gamecock girls, them girls been balling for years now, and they've been doing the damn thing for a long time now, but they never really got that hype of sensation. So it's amazing that you have teams like that who are good, but Caitlin Clark became the center of the conversation for everybody to want to start paying attention to women's basketball as if we haven't had great black hoopers in a, in a, a, a minute. But it's a black-dominated sport, so, you know, here we go. Um, yeah. Uh, good Times cartoon, super disrespectful. They shouldn't even call it Good Times. That's some of the most disrespectful, blatantly disrespectful things I've seen in a long time. It's a, it's a 2000 version of the Bay Bay Kids. That's the first thing that came to mind as soon as I... Uh-oh, you that trouble? <laughs> you that, she may have... She, I know she said she was driving. So... <clears throat> You there, Trouble? Yeah, I'm there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry. There's probably a lot of cars in the parking lot. 
So I think I was just saying that good times make you feel like it's just a 2000s version of baby kids. It's, it's, uh, it's disrespectful. Uh, I hope it flops. Um, I really hope it flops. I just hope it fails because uh, they need to understand how disrespectful it is. And and it's anytime black folks, anytime we come up against something, everybody else always seems to be for it. So I've seen a lot of people in the comments, you know, saying, oh, well, I think it's hilarious. You guys need to take a joke. But the joke is always on us. When the joke is on us, then everybody wants to kiki and have a good laugh about it and say how light it is. But when the joke is on the next demographic of people, oh, you know, they shouldn't have done that. Take that down. You know, oh, go, you know, let's let's get it, you know, let's boycott A, B, and C, and then everybody co- collaborates together. So I'm just paying attention to the dynamics. It is what it is. It's the same same crap, different toilet. Uh, loop for Congress, that's that's kind of funny to me. I kind of feel like that's what all of his troll space has been about over this class last past year and some change him having um, black Americans basically in his title FBA or whatever he, you know having his titles to get us to come inside of his room where he pretends to know something about politics as he has his Klingon and ex stripper and sassy lawyer co-hosts take over and you know be the real you know politicians in the room and he's just sitting back taking notes I feel like this is just a way for him to get a little bit of recognition to himself because seemingly that's what he's been doing online I don't know how many of the voters in his districts are actually in his spaces, so maybe they don't get to see what a troll he is. Like, you know, uh, a good portion of us have gotten the opportunity to see how he trolls the the black American community with his disingenuous spaces. But um, more power to him. If he get in, he get in. I mean, Florida, Florida is Florida. You know, Florida going to do what Florida going to do, but... You know, I just I think it's funny that he decides to come out now and then he just, and then he uses something like, "Oh, I'm gonna come in fighting these mother effers," and and really that's how you, you know. I guess Donald, Donald, I guess that that type of language worked for Donald Trump. It's not very professional, but I guess it worked for Trump. Maybe work for people, but you know, you don't get that wake up call because you can't do what the people do. So it is what it is. But Deuce told her much respect to you, brother, and much love. Y'all have a good night. All right. Thank you, Miss Trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, back in 98, I rode on the same airplane as Luke. I was going down south. Luke had came up here. Tallahassee, we had this. You said this. This when this is when I was in college. You said this thing called the Kappa Luwi. The Kappas were put on this huge, um, this this huge um little festival or whatever. And everybody all throughout the state would come up here and whatnot. So Luke, you know, and this was actually outside of the actual city limits. It was actually going to another city, but in the same area. But Luke had came up here to perform or whatever, you know, and Luke, uh, and I, I didn't end up going. I didn't even end up going. I had some friends. They went. Apparently, the girls on stage, you know, they just, and, you know, it's a difference between the actual climate of Tallahassee and Miami. Miami's a much more liberal, anything goes type place. Tallahassee, not so much, but apparently them girls started getting naked on stage. And, you know, it was just one of my homeboys. Somebody, it was a lot of licking and everything going on. Well, shortly after that, they put a ban on Luke. They didn't let Luke come up here, I don't believe, for a minute. You know, I, 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 that's what I heard. You know, I don't know how true it was. The people saying, yeah, they, you know, they, they, they banned Luke from coming back up to Tallahassee. I don't know how true it was or whatever, but. I know they were not happy campers of what went on at that stage from what everybody was saying as well, too. So, you know, of course, like I said, this this had to be around about 98 or so, the Kapalua they used to have and whatnot. But um, apparently, you know, it was um, it was some stuff going on in that stage. Like I said, I was not there to see it, and I don't know how true it was that he was banned or not, but that's what people were saying. That he was banned from coming up here for a long time or whatever. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, and, and I, I know trouble was saying like you know Florida. Florida is a wild place. Florida, Florida is a wild place for certain. But I, I have, I just, I would be shocked. I would be shocked, and I'd be surprised if, if Luke actually, you know, if Luke, if Luke became a, a Congress, a congressman of Florida, I'd be, I'd be really shocked. <laughs> I would really be, you know, and I think most of the people in the state would be shocked as well too. Uh, you know, Florida is a red. Red, red, red state, but um, you know, occasionally it will go blue, 
down an area that Luton them at, you know, it, it can go it can go blue down there sometimes as well. Too. The majority of the state is red, but I, I would be totally, totally shocked. DJ, go ahead. You got it. anybody else that wants to speak to as well, guys? We're going to be doing a space. Uh, we're not going to be back tomorrow, but Thursday, we're going to be doing a space on ADOS as well, too. I'm going to send that out as well, too. I want to get you guys. We're trying to see. Um, we're going to probably, I probably either tonight or tomorrow sometimes post that, but we're going to be doing a space on ADOS. So anybody in the space that um that, that that's familiar with ADOS wants to speak on it, make sure y'all attend that space Thursday night. We want to get a perspective and everything from people, so definitely come through and show up. Uh, DJ, go ahead. You got it. So let's get to it. Shout out to the room, share the room. I'll make sure y'all support New Start and follow New Start on social to soxcil.com. So uh, Angel Reese coverage. Um, yeah, I think that's sad that she get that type of uh, 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 clap back because remember last year in uh, in, in, in the uh, final uh, four or whatever it was, or, or maybe the final eight, Caitlin Clark was taunting Angel Reese with the ring finger. You feel know what I'm saying? Like, like excuse me. Early in the, in the season, she was taught taught an Angel Reese with the you know, hey, look at my finger or whatever. But you ain't got no ring though. <laughs> Shorty won the bread, you know what I'm saying? So when the when the when the final uh, eight came down last last year, and we all saw that live where uh, Jill Biden was in attendance of the audience, and, and Angel Reese, you know, hit her with the sham god and, and slammed on her, you know what I'm saying? And with Angel Reese, look at my finger. I'm coming to get that chip. So every the white news media took that right there, that particular story, and blew it out of proportion. Oh, that's that's, that's poor uh, athleticism. You ain't got no manners. You know you ain't got no respect for the game. Well, hold up a minute. She did the same thing to me just a couple of weeks ago when we lost to them. So now we went in when it matters. Yeah, I'm coming to get that ring. So now all of a sudden it's a problem. See, this is why we need our own black media. Support news title, y'all. Support news title, so that way we can tell our own stories, family. So that happened, and then don't forget, this is why Joe, Jim Crow Joe got to lose this year. Jill Biden tried to invite Iowa to the White House, all because of what everything that was happening. No, they lost, Joe. You don't get to come to the White House because you because of, of, of a participation reward. You took a L in the story. You see the ring on my finger. You look good. You know what I'm saying? You mad. Yeah, we might have lost to you this following year, but that's okay. You didn't make it. You didn't make it still. So it don't matter. I'm still a champ. Ain't your reason. You mad. LSU gang. Tigers. Rah, rah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> this is what it fall down to. Like people stay winning and they can't take it, man. So, uh, and, and Pearl Moore, uh, Professor, is the go to the uh, NCAA women's basketball. She got over 4,000 points to this day. That record ain't been broken. It's been like over 30, 40 years or something like that. Per, per, per more. Look her up. Yep. She, she was an old joke. You want to talk about with a baby Jordan? Yeah, let's go. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to that. Uh, Good Times cartoon. This is uh, Seth MacFarlane's work because when you look at the trailer of the Good Times, it reeks of the Simpsons humor and family guy. Uh, semantics or whatever, you know what I mean? So, this Seth McFarlane, I don't even think Seth got anything to do with it. He just probably was looking for something investment-wise to put his name on. You know, he can't play basketball forever. He just wanted to know another chip himself, so, so congratulations to him. And he probably gonna win another two or three more before he retire, you know what I mean? So, you know, he's probably thinking about life after basketball, but... Well, damn, his, his people couldn't have told him that wasn't the way to go? But, but that's what I was so you wasn't even a lot with good time swapping, yo. So what you know about living in Cabrini Green projects? You feel what I'm saying? What you know about living in the projects, bro? You've been sheltered your whole life, bro. And not to say you don't know nothing about your black people or culture or anything, or you didn't watch good times, uh, maybe rewinds growing up, but you wasn't there when it was being played live in, in real time. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, why would you even want to put your money towards that? But, you know, that goes to show you uh, athletes and entertainers, rather, I would say entertainers, they got to do a better job of protecting their wealth and assets. Because look what happened just recently to uh, Usain Bolt, you know, track track super god. Lost all his money because he put it in the hands of an investor, 
all, all his earnings are gone. Nobody know where it's at, yo. So that's so. So when you talk about a story, Somali, why ain't nobody talking about that athlete was as well? You know what I'm saying? How, the, how this investor took all the Usain Bolt bread. You feel what I'm saying? Because he trusted them. You know what I mean? And this is a Jamaican person that took his money to it, by the way. So it's like, ain't no one else to blame but your own people. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Good Times cartoon. Uh, John Amos spoke on it. Shout out to Comedy Hype. You know what I mean? Comedy Hype News. And he said, well, I guess I ain't got a problem with it, but we already know it'll never live up to the original. So, and he, and he said he didn't see the trailer. And he said also, because a lot of the uh, uh, actors and actresses are still around of Good Times, the original, none of them got a call to be in the new cartoon. You could have, I think it would have probably maybe not been so bad if you had someone like John Amos who was fired from by Norman Lear, the co-executive producer of the new animated series, to try to make some type of amends. But obviously, whatever the hate issue is, you don't want the black father in the household, Whatever, yeah, boycott good times, the animated version. And just for the record, because I understand this this side of it, Netflix ain't got nothing to do with it. They're just a distributor. You feel what I'm saying? All the all the information in the content is coming from Norman Lear, Seth MacFarlane, again who created or has his hands on things like The Simpsons, Family Guy, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. American Dad, I believe. So those are two people we really want to look at. Obviously, on uh, icing on the cake, they, they Steph Curry. You got to check your, uh, your investor people, make sure they ain't leading you down a rabbit hole that you can't come out of with your people. You know what I mean? So, moving on, Luke for Congress. You should never ever vote for someone like Luke, is the reason why. And that's good that you're bringing up the ADOS conversation because when that, at the height of that, and, and when Kamala was, uh, I think she was, she was running for president, I think, or something like that. Luke specifically told us to shut the F up, mind our business, and don't tell him who he could vote for when we was telling him, well, Kamala Harris is not a good choice of anything because look at all the stuff she did, and I guess we got to say allegedly for the space, when she was a uh, prosecutor and a uh, senator of California and all this other stuff, locking up black women because because uh, uh, of, uh, of an assumption that their kid wasn't going to school when they kind of find out that same child had uh, an illness, we'll just say that, had an illness and couldn't go to school, you know, six months out of the year. So you're going to send a truancy officer, the sheriff, a news crew to this woman, black woman's house and arrest her and pull her out in her robe and all this other stuff because her child wasn't going to school. But you didn't do the homework, Kumala, to know that why her child wasn't going to school. So that's big thing. I know uh, we Fahima brought that up the last time. You still locked that. I can't think of his name right now. You still had a lot of black men, but this one brother, I can't think of his name of specifically, locked up in California when they were either innocent or had bail or uh, was getting old R, meaning uh, your, your own recognizance. You know what I'm saying? To come back on a court date, a promissory note, basically. <clears throat> to come back for court or whatever the case be. Or he was just let go. She was not letting these these men out of jail, bro. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? This is very well known and documented. And you got people like Luke that just automatically coming to her aid still and telling us to hey, shut the F up. We don't know what we're talking about. And one day I tried to go up on one of his uh, uh spaces or whatever and say the exact same thing to his face. But here you go. You got the black, the the, 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 uh, the fanboys coming up here. Can't the ever up knacking, who you know what I'm saying, talking to Luke, and you ain't nobody to talk of politics. Why won't, won't, won't you check him on what it was he said to us two, three years ago? You know what I'm saying? And I couldn't even get a word in, so I don't go into Luke's spaces. Never will. It's, it, it's a waste of time. He, he, he a full-fledged Democrat, bought and paid shell, and that's about it. But yeah, you know, shout out to the music, though, and changing the game up the music business, the landscape of the music business for uh, advocating for your free right to uh, say what you want to say on record. But go ahead, though. <clears throat> yeah, Norman Lear, I know you mentioned him, but Norman Lear is dead now, isn't he? Didn't he die this year, last year? I think they just... No, I think he was on the line last year. I think he died last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was yeah, damn, he was damn near 100 years old. Hell. Yeah, because yeah, he came out that he had been uh, 
about stealing people's ideas. Y'all don't remember that story? Last? Yeah, the one black dude talking about that he had taken his um he had taken his ideas and stuff. Yeah. Well, even in that article I read tonight, even in that article, the the, the one that played um the original uh like we say Lionel on on um the Jeffersons, because he 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 was one of the writers, he was one of the ones that came up with the idea for Good Times. They were saying that him and the other guy hadn't got paid, so you know, or, or you know, they I guess they filed a lawsuit against him, so you know they he took his ideas or allegedly took their ideas and then you know had them as writers, but didn't pay him. Either what they deserved or the amount they should have got or whatever, allegedly. So let me just say allegedly, but yeah, um, yeah, Norman Lear. I think they're just using Norman Lear because he probably owns he may who knows, he may have copyright copywritten and everything, whatever. So they they're putting him up there. But it's the Steph Curry thing, like he mentioned, DJ, because you know, when good times came out, most of us in here wasn't born when, when good times came out. I I watched good times as a kid, watching the reruns and stuff like that back in the 80s you know as a little little kid we used to watch good times and we used to eat and stuff like that or whatever and professor made a, he made a valid point as well too when you talk about good times you know even though they were in the prime and, and you did you could say good times had some stuff that was stereotypical on there you had sweet daddy williams you had lenny you had ned the wino you had the um you had the gangs and the satan knights the gangs and all that kind of stuff as well too but like Professor said, it also showed you that you had this this family that was striving to get out of there. The father was in the house. The father was the man in the house. Um, James was probably the 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 most physically imposing, scariest daddy in TV history. The one that did not play anything because I can remember the episode we had to whoop the boys behind on there that was bullying Michael that stayed the weekend with him. So you had this father figure in there. Say what you want to about um you know about um also about about Florida you know and a lot of times people say well she was the reason they stayed in the project she you know she was supposed to be a god she was a god fearing woman and this and that like the, the kids and everything with the exception of JJ you know JJ was definitely very stereotypical you know he, he dynamite and 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 when he used to come on I. Like, what did you get that from? Oh, mama, I, I I just finds that I find like so. I mean, it was stuff that we know was stereotypical and everything else like that as well too. So we're we're not we're not denying that. But what I'm saying in terms of the actual family structure, they had a very solid family structure in place, and you know it it just based off of that 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 um trailer I saw. You know that that's not it, right there. I know uh, Cloud Nation Media says Good Times was very stereotypical. It 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 has stereo. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock that. It it has stereotypical stuff on there. It did. Let's be for real. It was portraying the actual projects, so you know they were gonna try to make it stereotypical as much as possible on there as well too. And that's one of the thing that we always mention. People always mention John Amos. You know, getting upset with the way the actual direction of the actual show was going. John Amos ended up getting fired. But let's not forget too. Esther Roll got upset too. It was a time that Esther Roll was not on the actual Good Times on the show either. You know, she didn't like the way things were written as well. Too, you have two serious actors and stuff like that, and then you have JJ's role and stuff like that. So, you know, they there were times that they got upset as well too. She got upset and she left as well too. So, you know, my thing with Steph Curry is that he's putting his money behind it. And, and you know, I don't know how much um, Seth Farland, uh, how much Seth McFarland money he's putting in there as well too. But I would think that, um, and of course we know that somebody like Steph Curry grew up, you know, grew up rich. He grew up rich. I know his parents not together now, or whatever. But you would think that his dad, maybe Dale Curry or mom or, or somebody, you know, you know, maybe could have like. And I don't know if he ran it. He's just grown man, so he may he may have just came up with this stuff and they didn't run it past anybody. But you would think that maybe. He 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 would have ran this past him and said, you know what, mom, dad, I was um, I was I was you know I I know you guys may have watched Good Times growing up. I'm thinking about doing a reboot of it, um, not the exact identical way that it was actually done, but I'm thinking about doing a reboot of it. What are your thoughts of it? What what are your thoughts? How do you think I should go about this right here? Since you guys actually watched this live and you watched this and everything else like that as well, too, because like you say, DJ, Steph Curry. There's no way that he he I, I seriously doubt if he watched many episodes. I could be wrong, but I, I, I he I'd be surprised if he watched a whole lot of episodes of say Good Times. 
Yeah, maybe I could see some episodes of you know the Cosby show, something like that. But good times, you know, I, I really have my doubts on that as well, too. So I just, you know, you would think that with Steph Curry, especially the, the image that he presents, that he would want to have something a little bit different tied to him than something like this, right? Like this, when you saw that trailer. You wouldn't say, oh, man, this is something that Steph Curry will put his money behind. Just the way, you know, he carries himself, you know, on and off the court. You would definitely not think that this is something that, hey, Steph Curry would want to have anything to do with and that he would tie himself to as well. So um, I see we got Black Majority State up here. Black, go ahead. You got it. Okay, okay. Hello, hello. New sort of DJ professor, everybody in the space. Um, yeah, so, man, some really good topics up there. I'm trying to figure out to start. Um, so, Angel Reese, let me start there. Uh, shout, shout out, salute to Angel Reese and her decision to move on to her professional career. I believe that she has the potential to be the highest paid female athlete in history. As long as she stays healthy, take care, takes care of herself and, uh, you know, does what she does, improves her game. Um, I'm, I'm not going to tarnish her with the white girl situation, but there was this controversy where uh, during that game, you know, they made this huge deal out of the fact that the LSU team was not on the court when the national anthem was sung. And they really tried to, you know, um, Colin Kaepernick, uh, the whole situation. Um, the coach came around and said, no, this is what we do. This is our normal, normal routine. The timing of the national anthem may be different because it's a tournament game or whatever the case may be. You know, they they had uh, LSU was getting flooded with angry patriots, um, racist, who uh, were trying to get these um, future scholarships taken away from from the athletes on the team. So I think she was just in an increasing um, situation that was just going to get progressively worse. Um, on her uh, mental and spiritual health. And she kind of alluded to that in that post-game interview where she was talking about, uh, you know, the, the amount of stress that she's been dealing with. And then her um, co-player, uh, I want to say her name is Flage or, or Flasho or whatever, but she said the same thing. You know, she wears a heavy crown, et cetera. So um, I'm, I'm, I, was, I'm, I'm, I am and I was disappointed in Ice Cube for not offering that $5 million to her. Because to me, that would be a much bigger um, bang for the buck in terms of this is a young black star. She deserves the money. She deserves the opportunity. She deserves to compete at that level with former players so that when she did transition back over to the WNBA, it would just put her at a whole different level. Um, and, and she's got the height and, and skill set, in my opinion, to do that. Whereas the white girl doesn't. But, but in my opinion... Ice Cube was thinking strategic business, but also thinking I'm a I'm a get back at the NBA by taking away a chip player that they're gonna want to you know put out there and you do the same thing that the NAA or the NCAA is doing and try to promote this great white hype. So I think it was a strategic move on Ice Cube's part. So for that reason, I'm like I get it from that side, but at the same time, I think he should have offered them both. The five million dollars, the, the opportunity, and again, I think Angel Reese would have would have did. Man, I think she would have been phenomenal in that in that position. Um, so that's my take on that. The Good Times cartoon. So it, it was it's bad marketing. The name they should have never used that name. I mean, as as y'all were thinking, good times or something with good, and then whatever you want to put after it. It could have had a completely different name to anything from the past. And then it, it would have stood on its own, too. There is a market for that because my dear Tyler Perry <laughs> kind of proves that the model works. The, the culture of rap music proves that that model works. There There's an appetite for it, even though it is a minstrel show. I, I get all the negative connotations with it. I think it was just the fact that they put the wrong name on that project. I watched that video that DJ put on uh, on the social with uh, John, John Amos. And so the, the guy who plays Dynamite and then I think it was the older sister also are a, a part of this project, but they got small roles. They got little bit characters and, and they're, you know, they said the same thing. I didn't watch the trailer. 
that they're they're going to kind of uh, wait and see type of approach on the whole situation. Uh, being older actors, you probably don't get a lot of phone calls. Um, you know, the way Hollywood does our black talent, um, it's probably just an opportunity for them to get some income and, um, you know, see where it goes. So, you know, again, I think, I just think the naming of it was the problem. Everything else, unfortunately, there's a market for it. And, um, until that market either is gone or we have the ability to do what, uh, the Laura C. Tucker tried to do to stop <laughs> all of this, um, you know, it's, it's just going to keep happening. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Luke, so I looked up Luke, man, so he's not on Ballotopedia yet, but his competition, the woman who's in place there, Sheila, man, I can't, I'm going to butcher this name, Churfulis McCormick, um, black woman married to a black guy. So this is very interesting. So she took over the seat in a special election from, I think the guy's name was Al C. Uh, he was a long-standing U.S. congressman, um, Al C. Hastings. Yeah, you talk about Al C. Hastings. Yeah, Al C. Hastings. So, the re reason I remember that is because back when I was like kind of, you know, uh, attending the um, Holly Party meetings every week. This was something that came up. It was like, damn, this is a this is a wide open seat. It's open for the taking. There was a bunch of people that put their uh, ring in the hat to try to get that seat, and um, you know they, they they didn't have a candidate that was that was um, going to challenge it. But I remember the woman, beautiful black woman, her husband. They were actually campaigning every single day. It's the first time I got to see a black campaign, like literally in person. Even though I'm not there in Florida with them. They're, they're posting their videos. They're trying to do park things. They're, they're knocking on doors. They're doing all the things that you would have to do to run a campaign. And 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 they just weren't getting any traction, unfortunately. So so it's kind of like, wow, this is like a, I don't know, a deja vu situation. This woman goes on to win that special election. And then she ends up winning the primary. And then she actually wins the actual election. I think that was... 2020, 2020, 2020 for the first one, and maybe like 2022 or something for the next one. So, long story short, it's primaries in August. I don't know when Florida shuts down the ability to jump into a primary. Um, Luke is a Democrat, and she's the Democrat nominee. She's the incumbent. It's very unlikely that he would be able to unseat the incumbent. The Democrat Party is not going to support him in it. It really just sounds like him bloviating like he does, talking, blowing smoke, gaslighting, etc., etc., etc. And really, even with his family, likely has no chance of winning under the Democrat Party, which means he'd have to run independent or Republican or whatever. Um, I know he's been involved in politics from being in them spaces or at the local level, but I just don't see him unseating this woman. Now, here's the other flip side. Her husband, this was the controversy. Her husband lives in Maryland. He was the assistant attorney state general of the state of Maryland, and he's got a law firm in Maryland. And so the controversy was, how are you running in Florida when your, your whole husband and family essentially lives in Maryland? Um, and she, she kind of skirted over that and, and basically, you know, slid into that slot and got into position, but it's like, she's got trust funds from her parents. You know, this is a silver spoon, golden, golden bowl person who's deeply connected to the system. And, um, it's unlikely that the Democrat party would go against all of this, um, legacy that she has. Um, with her husband and her family, yada yada yada. So that's that, that's my take on that. Appreciate that, Black. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let me go ahead and get to uh, DJ. I see you got your hand up. Anybody else that wants to speak as well, guys, come on up here. Don't be shy. Come on up here. We're not going to keep the space going open too, too long tonight. Like I said, we do have a um, ADOS space we're going to be hosting on Thursday. Anybody wants to speak in that space as well, too? We definitely want to hear what you guys got to say. Go ahead, DJ. You got it. Uh, what I was going to 
I'll say a lot. I would say right there, uh, Black Majority States. Everybody follow Black Majority States too. Uh, Black State of America. Uh, damn, you said a lot of stuff right there too. Uh, what I was gonna say. So uh, yeah, I think I guess we're talking about good times. Just to stay on that for a minute, I guess we'll just run the whole thing back. Um, this is why we need our own platforms because there's plenty of Black content creators out there that got their own. You know what I mean? Animation series and movies that they're trying to put out. Unfortunately, it winds up on Tubi, which is owned by a white person too. So <clears throat> this this is something to wake up. And um, damn, what was something y'all said, man? You know what I mean? Uh, oh yeah, Angel Reese, <clears throat> you should have won this championship too, but obviously nobody was gonna get past that Cardoza chick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's Baby Shaq right now. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to South Carolina. They won. You know what I mean? And they went undefeated too, even though I think UConn still should have been up in there. But uh, so I was all by one mark this year. Uh, uh, I said uh, Iowa wasn't gonna get past UConn, so they they they, they mopped the floor with them. So it is what it is. And uh, what you call it? Yeah, uh, you know, with the LSU, you know, because I'm an LSU fan. You know what I mean? From the football to the basketball or whatever. You know what I mean? So too much Instagramming, not enough Kobe. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, you ain't had your mama mentality this year to really go out there and get it because, you know, we see you on Instagram, you know, your name in the mix, a lot going on. Like you said, she facing criticism, whoop de whoop de whoop Don't even be on there trying to do none of that stuff. For what? You know what I'm saying? For what? You know what I mean? Just go on the gym, do what you got to do, come out of champ. You know what I'm saying? So that way you just point the finger at the other hand, be like, oh, shit. Excuse my friends, but you know, <laughs> I got the other one coming. You know what I'm saying? You're about to be real mad because Caitlin Clark, you're a loser, in my opinion, yo. You didn't win anything. So, like Professor said, like, yo, y'all hyping this white chick up to be the great white hoe. She ain't got no chip, man. Charles, so she, matter of fact, she the white Sir Charles Barkley. You great when, at that moment, but you couldn't overcome it, yo. You, you're not good enough. You know what I'm saying? That's, when, that's how you know you're not good enough, yo. You know what I'm saying? That you you can't make it all the way at least to the finals. You feel what I'm saying? You feel me? You, 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 you ain't did that last year. Now that you did made it, or, or or you made it to the finals, you know what I'm saying? You made it finally. Took that L and you ain't gonna never see this opportunity again in your life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hey, uh, Angel Reese, she up one, and Caitlin Clark down still zero. Don't, and, and then let's talk about the Ice Cube money. Why you ain't trying to offer that to Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark at the same time? Like, yo, both of y'all come over here and play. You feel well, he probably would have. He probably wasn't gonna offer both of them five million, but he could have did two point five million for each one. Right. Right. But yeah. let, let me let, let me ask you a question about let me ask you a question about that. But in in the big three, isn't the big three? Isn't it all men playing in there? Is it any women? I think I seen uh, uh, Taraji play before, like one summer. You know what I'm saying? A couple of other women, like you know, just get in there real quick or whatever. But it's mainly all men teams, though. But I think they had like some exhibition games where they let the women play too, as well. It's, you know, it's only fair because it's really just pickup games for fun, and you know, they get the entertainment around it. You know, it's Ice Cube be probably out there performing at every game or whatever. You know, even in the building or whatever, just chilling, watching, watching the game. But did that big three get popping though? Especially when the uh, the tournament come around. Like the final four, because they be playing. Because you know you want to win. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, that come with bonuses, all this other stuff. You know, you get you get your team name out there. You get the bragging rights for the year. Yeah, we won. You know, you know? so go ahead. Though. I, I'm gonna be honest, and I'm gonna kick it, Professor. I don't see any way possible that say Ice Cube. Now, I think if he would have went at the Angel Reese, that'd have been one thing. I don't. I don't think, but I think trying to get Caitlin Clark, I, let's not forget that the NBA bankrolls the WNBA. Okay, the WNBA really hasn't made much money. It's a WNBA that's been, it's been the NBA that's been kicking it, making them money. So the thing is what they're going to have to do is that um, they're going to probably have to, I mean, he can't get in a, in a bidding war with, say, the, the um, with the actual, um, with the NBA, the NBA sees how valuable that Caitlin Clark can be in terms of ratings and bringing in a new, a new audience and this and that, whatever. So if he, if he had that idea that, Hey, you know what? I'm going to make a play for Caitlin Clark. He should have did that behind the scenes. He shouldn't even announce it. He shouldn't have said nothing publicly. Just went ahead after the season's over with and offer her the money. You know, now the fact that you, you've, you've alerted everybody. <laughs> so the NBA, which is a multi-billion dollar league, 
they're not going to let you come in there and, 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 and take somebody that they're going to use that they think they can potentially they can make tens of 20s or 30, 50, 60, 100 million dollars off of. They, they send dollar signs with her. So he's made it that much harder. He should have went behind the scene, offer both of them a contract. If he just was going to offer Caitlin, that's what he was going to do. OK, fine. But the fact of the matter that you've alerted everybody and you let people know that, hey, I'm trying to get you for five million dollars. Now you now you're just really creating like a, a bidding war. It's going to be a feeding frenzy. They're not going to let you snatch her up because they got big plans for her. She's talking about they, they probably she's going to probably be the number one pick. She's going to get all kind of endorsement deals. The actual pay scale for the WNBA is about to shoot up now because of her as well. They're expecting sellout. Sell out whoever gets us is expecting to sell out probably season tickets and home games. You're gonna have more TV revenue coming in. Yeah, they they they're gonna be they're gonna have more TV revenue coming in. You got more TV revenue coming in, and you're gonna have like I said, you're gonna have more more games on TV for the WNBA. You're starting to get a bigger crowd now. So I know what he was trying to do in terms of marketing, trying to get more exposure and everything else like that, because she would have brought eyeballs over there to the big three as well, too. But now, you know, you just have to go ahead and, and you do it like you don't you don't you don't make it a public when you're black. You can't you, you got to stop making all this stuff public. Just go ahead and do it behind the scenes. Offer her a contract. You know, of course, you know. People are smart enough that she may say, hey, you know what? Let me wait and see what the WNBA is going to do because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use both of y'all to get in the bid war as well, too. But he didn't do that, and I think any leverage that he could have had is possibly gone because now now the, the antennas are up for the NBA. And when I say that, I'm not even talking about the WNBA. The NBA, let's be real, the NBA runs it. The NBA runs the WNBA. So the antennas are up now for the, for the NBA, and they're going to be checking, looking, and seeing, like, you know what? If Ice Cube's going to offer you $5 million, you know what? We can offer you $7 million. Whatever whatever he can offer, they can they can match. You know, Now, they may not want to do it because the entire league, you know, is going to be looking like whatever. But also, you got to think about the guys in the big three. A lot of the players in the big three at Ice Cube got a former NBA players. So what happens if you bring in two – let's be for real now. We're talking about – we're talking about – you're talking about athletes who have big egos. You talk about male athletes as well, too. What happens if you bring in Caitlin Clark and you bring in Angel Reese and they're making more than the average male over there, the average man over there in the big three? If she's making two, let's say they, he would have split and, and she's making 2.5, she's making 2.5. Well, the average salary might be 200 grand with these guys, 100 grand with these guys. Because a lot of them, like I said, are ex NBA players. Then you get all kind of people in their feelings as well, too. So it, it's it, it, it's I feel him because you're trying to take your league to the next level. But there's so many different layers of this thing, man. It, it, to me, it's just crazy. Professor, go, go ahead, DJ. Go ahead, Professor. Yeah, I just want to say um, Black Majority made a great point about the uh, situation in the LSU and our game um, with the, the whole national anthem situation because you know that got blown up um, when the governor I, I believe it was the governor of Louisiana who made comments about the team not being out there so that added more stress of course to Angel Reese because you know she's been this villain the entire time for the white media. So that played a huge part in more nasty comments and death threats and everything being made towards her and also towards the entire team because they really were uh, going after the entire team besides Angel Reese. So I just want everybody to understand that too. Um, anytime you have a team a majority black players because I think LSU only had that one white player, uh, the, the girl that just uh, decided to leave. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Haley, Haley Van Leaf. I think she decided to just leave LSU. She was the only white girl, um, but that team was majority black, and pretty much that team stood behind Angel Reese, and so Angel Reese was considered, of course, the leader of that team, and so naturally, majority of the Heat. Is coming down on her. Uh, and this is basically these patriots, as uh, Black Majority mentioned, 
you know, let's just be honest, it's these white males, and I'm pretty sure some white females are all up in there trying to find ways to get these girls' scholarships taken and death threats being made towards these young ladies. So this tells you, y'all, how serious the sports, and I'm talking about sports in general, has become where they use sports as a way to even target black athletes um, because they don't want these black athletes getting the free scholarships, the, the NIL money. A lot of this is jealousy, y'all. <laughs> just, just keep it real. They don't want black people having none of this major money or anything else in America that can help our people, okay? Uh, let's just keep it real. We got to be 100 when we talk about these issues because that's what it comes down to. That's why Nick Saban uh, left the game. He was upset that these black players were starting to get that big money, and he didn't want them to have that. That's what a lot of this anger and stuff is coming from that you're seeing out here. Uh, so I want everybody to stay aware of what's really going on. The reason why they're going after these black athletes, and we're talking about like Angel Reese, um, because it used to be a time it would just be they would be targeting the black male athletes. Well, you're seeing the change now. It's all of them now uh, because of this NIL thing. Um, so that's another part of this story, y'all, that we, that we have to throw in there. I'm going to land right there. Go ahead, Black. You got it. Okay, yeah, that's what's up, Professor. Man, yeah, that, that really what it is. They're trying to, especially for her, they want to they want to diminish her ability to earn a living at her fullest capacity um, by, you know, uh, putting all these stains on her name and her reputation. That's really what it is. That's why it's so dangerous for, you know, the, the Nigerian personality who's always got some anti-black-ish to say always got a, a black American's name in his mouth and is always trying to dope, throw dirt at us. Um, that guy's a massive problem to me. But um, oh, I came back up, okay, because um, when it comes to the to the big three, so, um, and I agree, the 2.5 million would have been, would have been love. Um, the, the, so I look at the salaries. The WNBA is like a tenth of even that, somewhere around 250. I think some of their higher players might might have contracts where it's like close to 300, and 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 so in some of those interviews, what I was hearing was the girl, the, and this is why that that person who was in Russia smoking marijuana, whatever they were doing, who, who they did not allow to come back over here. The reason that he, that person was over there, and you can you can look into Dawn Staley's after uh, after the or at, after the the first win, not the second win, her comments as to where I'm going with that. Um, but the reason is because they have to go overseas in order to make more money. So this is a whole, this is like the, this is the way the WNBA actually works. They play here for the, for whatever they make here. And then they go overseas to make more money. And that's kind of the system that they're in right now. Um, so offering 2.5 million, that's 10 times what the WNBA is paying these players so, so, so what Ice Cube was doing again to me is very. This is a militaristic economic strategy. I'm gonna take your best players, and then I'm going to force you to pay all the other players ten times what you're currently paying them. Um, like, so for me, to be quite honest, all these agents, depending on what Angel Angel Reese and this white girl can can get out of the WNBA, if they end up breaking the bank. Ice Cube is the reason that they're able to break the bank and, and, and literally if they're able to push the salaries up in the WNBA, it's really Ice Cube is the reason why. And so they, they kind of owe him some type of credit for that just because he was willing to push the valuation way up through the roof compared to what they're making. They wouldn't have to go overseas and do all that if they were being paid, you know, a couple of million a year. Um, and then with Angel Reese and, and unfortunately this this white girl, they're going to have sponsorship opportunities, and that's really where the big money's going to be for them. I don't think that, given again, she she she's healthy, she gets some type of mental health spiritual advisor that kind of keeps her 
in, in a good place because she said she has not been happy since she won the national championship. That's really a lot <laughs> for someone to say. You know, I reached the pinnacle of my sport. I'm at the top of it. And then after that, I can't even just wake up and say I'm happy every day. Um, so, so for me, that's a tragedy. If it was a relative or, or, or someone who, you know, was, was in the family, whatever, someone who I knew. Um, so I just wanted to come up to say that, um, the, 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 I was trying to get into the big three salaries. Now, obviously these guys, like you said, ex NBA players, they have made millions of dollars. This is kind of keeping their career going. I thought, and, and I was trying to find it. I didn't get to confirm it, but I thought they had like a revenue sharing model where, they would get a minimal salary and then they would get something on the back end. So I don't know if that's still how they're doing it. I remember when Ice Cube was trying to put out like an NFT or some type of, um, you know, crypto uh, deal where people could essentially invest into the league. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I have to, I have to look and, and verify that. But I thought that was the whole thing. I don't think these men, these are grown men. They know they know the business inside, and I don't think they're at the stage where they're going to play jealousy over these women. If anything, in my opinion, if they brought the crowd to the big three and they brought the eyes to the big three, it would benefit everybody. So um, I just, I, for me, you know, because plus they'd probably be looking at these, these these young women as their nieces or maybe even their daughter or whatever, and they would probably be looking to protect them is what I would hope would be the case and not kind of compete against them because big threes like half court. So I could see an Angel Reese playing point, not really have, having to go in the pain or any of that body up with nobody, but just, you know, just, and, and for what it's worth, Caitlin, she, she's got a, she's got a shot. So for her, she could be hitting buckets all day. It is what it is. Um, but that's how I, I would use them if it was me putting them in that position. You just stay on the wing, you shoot your shot, and, and it is what it is. I'll end with that. All right. Appreciate that, Black. One thing I'll say that when you're talking about athletes, they look and see how much the next athlete is getting paid, whether it's professional football or baseball. One of the big things in, in the NFL, you see these quarterbacks, when they sign a contract, they want to know who was the last quarterback to sign one for and got how much guaranteed money so and so got. Uh, so they they look at this kind of stuff. Um, and definitely a lot of them were were former players, but you know sometimes, let's be for real, some of these athletes don't make the best financial decisions and stuff like that. There are a number of guys. Um, Anton Walker, who played with the Boston Celtics years ago, made all kind of money, and and had really nothing left towards the end of his career. So a lot of these guys, you know, if they are in the big league, some of them are just paying, like you say, just to stay competitive and just to do something to keep in shape. You know, some of them getting a little change from it. But some of them may be actually, um, you never know financial-wise, some of them may actually, um, you know, need the money because most of the guys in the big three, I know you had Allen Iverson and stuff like that, but most of them, most of the guys in the big three weren't, quote-unquote, superstars, Hall of Fame-type players, generational-type players as well, too. Some of them might have been – you know, good players and, and stuff like that as well, too. But um, normally you're not, you know, I haven't seen anybody, you know, at the level of, of another, um, you know, Allen Iverson. That's not to say you don't have other guys in there that, that may not have made a, a all-star game or, you know, been, been valuable players as well, too. So I just, I don't know, I just have a hard time believing, um, you know, with athletes and stuff, if they, if they come in, especially if an athlete feels that they're better than somebody else, you know, whether it's a young lady or not, it's like, well, you know, I'm a better player than her and I'm making a fraction of what she's making. You know, some I think some of the guys will be fine. Like, hey, you know what? Bringing more eyeballs in, you know, that, that that's going to make the, the league richer and make us richer in terms as well, too. But then I think you'll have some guys that will say, hey, you know, you know, this ain't right. If, why am I making, you know, six, seven, eight times less than than than. They'll say, then this girl, let's be for real. We talk about men too. They say, why am I making six, seven times less than this girl when I'm better than her? I can do more than her. And, you know, she she has a reputation and name simply because she was playing against other girls in college. So I, I think, I, I really think that you would have some men that would have an issue with it. I don't think everybody in the league would, but I think you would have certain guys that look in terms of, you know, 
People are always looking when it comes to when it comes to um, athletics, when it comes to money and everything else. Whether you're talking about boxing, football, basketball, people always look to see what their competitors are making as well too. Because if so and so is making this right here, and my credentials are better, then I should be making just as much or more money than that person that you're paying all this money to. That was one of the things um, a few years ago when you had these huge contracts being dished out in, in football for these quarterbacks. Everybody was saying they would hold off. Some of these guys will hold off and wait to the other person sign just to see exactly how much I can get. Okay, well, you're going to give Deshaun Watson a uh, $50 million guaranteed. Well, then I want $53 million guaranteed. Or I want $60 million guaranteed. I want X amount of dollars guaranteed. So they're always looking to see what the other athlete, what the other athlete is making. So they can go ahead and they, they want their pot sweetened as well, too. Go ahead, Black. You got it. Yeah, and, and I, I, I understand what you're saying. I agree, and I think that's why Cube, when he when he established this league the way he did it, the, I think he, he took that into account. So what I did find was, um, this was in 2019, and so you know the structure may have changed, but essentially each player would get a hundred thousand dollar game check. So every game they played, they got a hundred thousand dollars. I don't know how many games they play in a season, but let's say they play ten games, that's a million thousand dollars. Ten thousand for ten games, yo. So up to a hundred thousand a season. So how is he paying uh, Snow Bunny uh, five million? That ain't gonna that ain't gonna sit right. But I agree with your analogy of using that war tactic to force the uh, NBA to shell out more money to the WNBA. But go ahead. Yeah. So so that article that I'm looking at is Heavy dot com, and, and in this one they say, I'll just read it. Verbatim, the projection on a weekly game check of roughly a hundred thousand or more, including the playoffs, was the same number revealed at the end of 2018. Um, but then, but then it goes on to say that over 50 percent of the revenue was also shared amongst the players. Now, again, if the, if the league is making more money, I mean, maybe they say instead of giving 55 percent to the players, we'll go 45 percent. I don't know how it may have changed over time. But if they're filling up these little arenas, which are basically basketball arenas, and they got a TV contract and the league is growing, um, I, I personally, again, I don't know how many games they play, but I got to assume that $5 million that be offered it is not something that's going to break the bank. And it may be even where he said, okay, well, I'm going to take this out of my own personal uh, whatever, my personal share of the revenue. You, you still there, Black? That's the incentive. I'll say that again. Hey, you're in the Matrix. Uh, no, nah, you're not in the Matrix. You're just going in and out. But go ahead. Uh, go back 30 seconds. Of, I mean, uh, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Okay, I'm having a little bit. Uh, I may be in this yeah. for a minute. Yeah, go back like 20 seconds or whatever. Okay, so if you can hear me, I was just saying that the revenue sharing was the the carrot for the older players, right? And then and I get it. They, they, they might have lost blow, blow some money. They might be in bad financial straits. All that's extreme, extremely relevant. But I think overall it was, hey, guys, we're trying to do something that's different, that's special, so if we can boost the whole league, everybody makes money at the same time. And um, and I think that's why a lot of players will come into it um, because, you know, again, if there's money on the table, so be it, but also it gives them a few more years of their career. I, I, man, when it first came out, I loved the big three, and I wanted to go to a game in Detroit, but I was at the Narcan and Gopher National convention and i ended up uh the farrakhan spoke so i was like man you know it was like everything's happening at the same time and i had to kind of not go to the big three game so one day i'm gonna definitely get one in because i love the atmosphere i love i love i love everything about it to be quite honest but that's just my take all right thank you black thank you thank you thank you I guess on that note, guys, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get ready to close it out for the night. So we will um, be back Thursday night. We'll see you guys then. Like I said, we're going to do a space on ADOS. So you guys definitely, 
ADOS, definitely come out and check that out. <clears throat> we'll see you guys Thursday night. So everybody take care. Peace. Appreciate everybody coming through.